Evolution of medieval shields. The early Middle Ages saw a quite crude form of armor and shield. Metal had not begun to be widely used, so both armor and shields were commonly made of wood and animal hide. The shields tended to be small, round objects that serve a minimal level of close range defense. As the Middle Ages passed and advances in technology allowed the development of new armor and weapons, a new shield was needed. Different shapes and sizes of shield were adapted, each to serve a specific purpose. Features, as handles, were added to shields in order to make them more practical in battle. New methods of warfare continuous necessitated revision of shield design. Let us now take a look at several of the most common medieval shield types. The Kite Shield Where early medieval shields were lightly constructed and tended to be small, the kite shield was a larger shield that first came into use around the 10th century. The kite shield was adapted so that the soldier could protect his foreleg while in combat. The shield itself was wide at the top and tapered towards the bottom. Many kite shields possessed the gradual curvature so that it would better fit the contour of the soldier's body. An innovation that was added to the kite shield at the latter point was the attachment of N arms to the back of the shield. The N arms were leather straps that allowed the knight or soldier to attach the shield to his forearm rather than try to hold on the strap with his wrist. Functionally, the N arms greatly increased the likelihood that the soldier could hold on to his shield, an important consideration when in the heat of the battle. The kite shield is the type of shield features at the bow tapestry, a medieval tapestry chronicling the Norman invasion of England in 1066. Thus, the kite shield bears a heavy association to the medieval Norman style of armor and warfare, a style heavily reliant on cavalry. The buckler. The buckler was a type of shield adapted by the common foot soldier during the late medieval period. A small shield the buckler ranged between 6 and 18 inches in diameter and was gripped with one hand because of its small size. Generally, the buckler was a round shield, though some examples of rectangular shape have been documented. The small size of the buckler allowed it to be constructed of more heavy material. So many bucklers were made of metal or had metal attached to them, an inclusion that strengthened the buckler shield. The buckler proved to be a quite effective defense when combined with the short sword in close combat. Because of the small size, however, a buckler shield was virtually ineffective against missile weapons such as arrows. The Heater Shield By the 13th century, body armor had seen a marked increase in effectiveness and durability. If the armor worn by a soldier could take the brunt of the defensive work, then the shield would be adapted once again. The heater shield was a revised version of the kite shield. The late medieval armor allowed the kite shield to be made smaller, and its shape led to later historians dubbing it the heater shield. This type of shield is widely recognized as a type that was stylized with the medieval heraldry. Shields themselves fell by the wayside as armor became increasingly effective, but the heater shield was the type of shield preserved for a ceremonial purpose in the late medieval period. The targe. The targe was a variation of the medieval round shield that has become closely associated with a Scottish warrior. Normally, the targe was a slightly larger shield than the buckler, but it was used in the same manner. The targe was intricate in its construction and decoration, and many of the examples of Scottish targes that we have today are beautiful. They were constructed of wood and covered in black cowhide leather. The front of the Taj was embossed with an intricate Celtic part, part of the reason that the Scottish Taj has remained so widely recognized. The Pavis 
The last type of medieval shield that we'll cover was called the pavis. It was commonly used by bowmen. The pavis was a large convex shield that was used as a fully body protection. Bowmen and archers, because they were set at a distance from the main battle, rarely wore strong armor. The lack of armor necessitated some type of shield from the arrows of the opposing archers, and the pavis served the purpose marvelously. It is thought that when the archer chose his position, the pavis was planted in the ground by using a spike attached to the bottom of the shield. He was unable to shoot by standing up and to restrain his bow or knock a new arrow by squatting down behind the planted pavis, thereby shielding himself from enemy fire. Handles affixed to the back of the shield allowed him to grab it and move any time movement became necessary. The large surface area of the pavis allowed them to be used as the canvas for artists as well. Many examples of medieval pavises have the coat of arms of the city where the shield was made painted on them. Others have paintings of religious icons on them. The pavis saw a more prolonged existence than some of the other shields because archery was a constant throughout the medieval period up until the invention and wide use of gunpowder and firearms in the 18th century.